Hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. Yes, and Bridget, hello. And this is number 36 in Sounding the Shallows. And it's just occurred to me, um, probably to nobody else, uh, that if you add up the number of times we did No Shore in Sight, mm. it was 63. Mm. We've done 36 of these. Mm. So 99 times I have said, hello everybody, Adrian Plass here. <laughs> yeah, that means I must have said... And Bridget, and Bridget, hello. Uh, so next Friday <laughs> will be the 100th time we've said that. I cannot believe that. No. Anyway, no, nothing's no. nothing's changed t that much. In no, that I don't think it has. I mean, I think there is uh, there is a bit of hope around for some people. I know somebody who wrote to us this week said she was waiting by the door for her vaccine letter, and yeah. and we've both had our first vaccine. So so because being elderly. Um, and that's been a good experience, hasn't it? Well, it certainly was for me. I mean, I, I, I it, it ends up being just a scrape in your arm. But the fact is, I went up to the surgery and it was packed with people. And there was something about the way the nurses and the volunteers and everybody else were working so hard. It was absolutely amazing. I mean it. Mm. I mean, the, the speed with which this is happening is phenomenal. And I said to one of the nurses, you're doing a fantastic job. Mm. And she she laughed and smiled and there was no strain in i mean people are working hard but yeah. i think there's a great um pleasure for a lot of people in knowing what they're doing at the moment well i think there is but of course already uh things that you know there's been lots of questions about it and uh about the oxford vaccine and and there's just that sense of confusion again and i think what we're yearning for is for something to be perfect. Uh, it's not going to be, is it? I mean, COVID's going to be here. Well, we're told it might be here for a very long time and we're going to have to learn to live with it. But the mm. irony is we've, it's like a new vocabulary. You oh, know, we, well, we, we start yeah. tri tripping these words off our tongues. Yeah, we start saying, my, my oldest son, son, I said to him, of course, then as I said, there's the South African variant. And he said it's sounding more and more like Mornington Crescent the longer we go on. <laughs> and for those who listen to a particular comedy <laughs> program on Radio 4 will know exactly yeah. what that means. We we really don't know what we're talking about. No, I mean, we? we talk about vaccine efficacy. Um, I don't think most of us use that word very often. And then there's this spike protein. Ah, well, it's, mm. it's all to do with the spike protein. Do you know, I sometimes think that if we talk about it and use these words it gives us a sense that in some way we've got it under control and yeah. uh and facing the reality that even when lockdown finishes we are not going to have this miraculous escape yeah and in a way you know as christians i'm not quite sure why we struggle so much with this you know because that this this idea of everything just being so easy and so perfect it, it's mm. not it's not the story of the gospels or of acts or of life ever since is it no i uh, it, it's it's interesting what you say about perfection i mean it, if you live in the west you can achieve a sort of perfection yes you can um, things can work things perfectly. can work perfectly Mobile if you lived in different parts of the world you wouldn't yeah, feel like exactly. that and when you look back at someone like paul one of the, you know the great figures of the new testament who had a thorn in his flesh or his side that he asked three times for it to be taken away and and it never was mm. and he went through the most appalling succession of uh, of struggles um, and in fact when Ananias who was the one who had to go and tell him he was now one of the one of the um, his Christian brothers um, and it wasn't too thrilled at the prospect was told by God I want you to tell him how much he's going to suffer for me yes that is really interesting isn't it actually what what did he say exactly um, he said because I've got it written down here I will tell you exactly what he said um, he says, uh, "Go to the go to the place where there's a man named Saul from the city of Tarsus. Paul is praying." The Lord said to Ananias, "Go, I've chosen him to tell foreigners, kings, and the people of Israel about me." That's the good news. Mm. Not so good news. I will show him how much he must suffer for worshiping in my name. Yeah, I don't think we always think about that, do we? I think we tend to. 
I think I have tended to love so much the moment when Ananias touches Paul, who's been sitting there in the dark for three mm. days, and calls him brother. Yeah. And what that must have been like for Paul, who's had that encounter with Jesus. And I don't think we tend to think about those words, that actually before it even happened, that encounter, mm. God was saying to Ananias, I want you to tell him right from the right from the word go mm. that this is not going to be easy. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Because, I mean, we've got it all written down, what happened to Paul. <laughs> Sometimes I think it must have been quite complicated, really. Well, I mean, Paul was a great... He loved metaphors. He loved working stuff out. And he produced a list of things in Corinthians that was a list of what he'd gone through. Yeah. And my view is there was a sort of satire in it because he was saying, if anyone says they've suffered, just look at my list. <laughs> and I don't think he was showing off. He was saying, just look at it. And I was just trying to imagine Luke and Paul together, which is a ridiculous thing to do, but never mind. Well, they did we spend are. a lot of time together. They and did, he did indeed. Luke did write it all down. Exactly. So, so here's, here's Paul talking to Ananias. Uh, no, to, to Luke. To Luke. Sorry. Oh, dear. I thought putting this together seemed such a good idea when I thought of it. I, just, just, I was just going to make a list. Simple. Oh, still, I, th I do think it will be worth it, don't you, Luke? I mean, what do you think? I mean... What's your, uh, Dr. Luke, what's your um, diagnosis? Well, it's that I hope it is worth it. It's taken quite a long time already. OK, right. Where have you got to? Right. Well, where I've got to is the shipwrecks. Um, yeah. Let me just uh, count them off on my finger. So um, I can remember one, two, three, four times I was shipwrecked. Well, or was it five? Oh, it was three. It was three shipwrecks. Oh, oh, three. Well, now you do surprise me. Do you know I could have sworn it was four or five, surely? No, 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 it wasn't. But we've been through this already. That was the 40 lashes minus one. There were five of them. But you said that was six. I did not. I did not, Paul. I said it was five because that's what it was. And don't look at me like that. It was five. Oh, look for now. Never mind the 40 lashes minus one. Let's do the shipwrecks and let's get them done. Right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay. So, four, you said, didn't oh, you? it was three. Oh. Three. Three, right. Three shipwrecks. Look, one finger, two fingers. Yes, all fingers, right, yes, all right. Three Thank fingers. you very you much. Yes, shipwreck yes. three times. All right, all right. As was I, in case anyone is remotely interested. Okay, I got it, right. Okay, now, let's see, right, let's see, right, right. Right, yep, it's going well now. Now, next question. Um... We need to talk about when I've been in danger from my own countrymen. So, have I ever been in danger from my own countrymen? I'm trying oh, to think. Yes, 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 you have for sure. This very moment, for example. Oh, speak up, Luke. I can't hear what you're saying. Um, um, I said your wife Thorn will be here in a moment. Oh, will she? Oh, oh let, let, let's go and get some tent making done. We can finish this later. <laughs> Honestly, are you sneaking in about your wife Thorn? thorn in the flesh that's not at all all right really but it is interesting isn't it i mean we get these double things all the time like jesus saying to his disciples i've come they may have life and have it to the full and it's easy to think right that means we're going to have the very best of time mm. but then we, we get him saying you'll be chased out of jewish meeting places and the time will come when people will kill you and think they're doing God a favour. So it never was, it never was that it was going to be perfect. He also and says, it was uh, going which to be, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Highly significant that when, I, I'm telling you this now, so that when the time comes, you'll remember what I've said. Mm. In other words, it, don't be fooled into thinking that total peace and avoidance of trouble no. is... Um, abundant life because no. it's not and he has actually said that the holy spirit will be with them so yeah. he always says you know you're not on your own but mm. physically you are going to be going through it on your own but that he's leading the holy spirit but i think i think we do look for miraculous escapes in all sorts of ways i mean we well, I think a lot of us would like to leap over the uncertainty and arrive at a place where, where, where we're perfect, you know, where we've escaped who we are 
and and moved into something slightly more admirable really yeah it's interesting i think it reminds me a bit of when new babies come along and the but say perhaps the father is a very organized chap who knows how to do things and suddenly finds there's a little anarchist in the house <laughs> and to do things properly you have to apply yourself not only to do doing them but accepting the stuff the stuff that surrounds you when that happens i remember r writing years ago in the sacred diary about the chief character adrian wanting to have a new prayer life because he's now a house group leader um, and this is this is uh, this is what happened to him decided this afternoon that as a study group leader a dramatic improvement is needed in my prayer life <laughs> I intend to pray for two solid hours every night after Anne's gone to bed. I think two hours should be enough. Don't want to overdo it. 1.30 a.m. So far, so good. Prayed from 11.15 until 1.15. I feel tired, but mystical. Must keep it up. Monday, April 14th. A rather a shame Anne and Gerald can't make the same efforts over consideration for others as I'm making over prayer. The row they made getting up this morning when I was trying to get a bit of extra sleep, of course, I forgave them. About to start my new extra prayer time this evening, but got distracted by the quarterfinals of the North East Bedfordshire Indoor Bowls Championship on television. Suddenly it was 1am. I'm too tired to pray. Why have I watched bowls instead of praying? I don't play bowls. I'm not even interested in bowls. Never mind. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to get it right. Tomorrow, for sure, I'm going to get it right. 2 a.m. I really, truly, honestly did intend to pray tonight. I got caught up in a long Albanian film with subtitles set in a kitchen. I kept thinking something was going to happen, but it never did. They never and suddenly do. the film finished. <laughs> I have crawled to bed. Wednesday. Felt morose and exhausted at breakfast. <laughs> Anne said, How's the late prayer going, darling? Couldn't meet her eye. All right, I mumbled. Gerald said, Were you speaking in tongues most of the time, Dad? I could have sworn I heard you speaking in Albanian for ages. <laughs> oh, very funny. I deliberately didn't smile later on when he asked if I knew that David Owen was an anagram of an odd view. Fell asleep at work today. Ah, but I forgave them. Thursday. Was absolutely determined to get the prayer thing right last night. I knelt down at 11pm and closed my eyes. Woken and manhandled to bed at 4am by Anne. Didn't seem over-sympathetic, really. Fell asleep at work again today. Got home to find Anne with one of those OK, this is going to get sorted out right now expressions on her face. She said, darling, tell me why you can't go to bed early and then get up early to pray. <laughs> oh, I said, well, I, d I don't like getting up quite, said Anne, and I don't like being joined every morning by a guilty, exhausted, disillusioned mystic. Besides, besides, she smiled, I miss you at night. Couldn't you just try the other way just for a little while? I promised I'd try. Friday, 9 a.m. Up at 6 a.m., good prayer time. I'm glad I decided to switch to the morning. <laughs> I wish that was not quite so true for us and for so <laughs> many other people. Yeah. And I know just what you mean, Adrian, about watching some stupid thing you're not in the least bit interested in, but you kind of get caught up in it. You it's, do. Uh, it's so easy and it's so hard to be more than we are really yeah i think what we are always looking for is a sort of clear route out um and and, and i think you know we're always hoping that god will have that route planned out for us i think that's why those those verses in jeremiah you know the ones um i know the plans i have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future mm. I think that's why they're so important to so many people the idea that God has a plan for us I mean it's an interesting one isn't it because this is actually actually God was talking to the, to the Israelites and saying when 70 years are completed for Babylon 
I'll come and fulfill my good promise. He didn't say it's going to happen right now. Mm -hmm. And it's within the context of some pretty weird prophecies. I mean, just before all those things about the plans, he says, don't let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Don't listen to the dreams you encourage them to have, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. They're prophesying lies to you in my name and I haven't sent them. So even within this, I think we have to be aware that that what, I mean, obviously he wants us to prosper, but what does that actually mean? Well, it's mm. like the life in abundance, isn't it? He wants us to have something very, very special and he does have plans for us, but we tend to interpret them as being something easy and nice and straightforward, do we? Is that... Right, yeah, we're we're on dangerous ground here, aren't we? Because it it's become almost a, an icon of Christian living that God has a plan for your life. Yeah. Um, and that all you've got to do is something or other in order to see what it is and to live it out and mm. find fulfilment in it. But perhaps what has gone wrong is that we have not looked at the things we've already talked about, which are clear indications that it is very unlikely that there will be some total miracle of fulfillment yeah. in our lifetime yeah but that in the end the thing like paul paul would have done anything i think um to further the the gospel now i, I don't think i would i don't think i'm a paul mm. but there is no doubt that he was warned that it would be a tough old road yeah, and, and maybe he? that was good for him to know that because I think that if I'd had a direct call to go to somewhere, mm. to go to Philippi, I would assume that that would mean that this plan that God had would, would be something really straightforward. And actually, when Paul gets to Philippi, there's no church there at all. Mm. And he hunts for the church. And he finds some women down by the side of a river, doesn't he? And then yeah. things go really pear-shaped and he ends up in jail. Well, it's a very bad plan. I mean, it, it, that, yes. for, the, for the world's, the world's <laughs> view of it, yes. some woman starts following him in the street and shouts at him and, and in the end he tells her off and that brings people uh, after him and they catch him and they put him in jail. And not only is he, he put in jail, but he's put in the deepest, darkest dungeon right. that it's possible to find. So here he is, absolutely, totally prevented from doing the thing Following the plan. that was the plan. Yeah. And while he's sitting there, there's an earthquake. So it's still not going too well, but the earthquake knocks the shackles off him. Um, he, the jailer is terrified because he knows he'll die if they run off, but they haven't run away. Paul's there with his mate and he becomes a Christian, the jailer. And things move in a direction Paul could never, ever have anticipated. Yeah. But he was not in charge of the plan. He did not have a little map to follow mm. to see what was going to happen. Mm. Maybe that's what we've lost. Yeah, bit. maybe it is. I mean, I was thinking of our situation now. And I know a lot of people, including us, are longing to be back. I know some people are back in church, especially people not in the UK. And, and I know small groups are meeting. But for a lot of us, it's still on Zoom. And there is a sense sometimes that that isn't the real thing. And when we get to the real thing, that will be what God wants. Mm. And, and actually, I think quite a lot of people are finding that there is an experience, a very special experience, because you're seeing people's faces and we normally see the back of people's heads. So we see the pain. Mm. We see the joy. Quite a lot we of emotion, actually. A yeah. lot of emotion yeah, going on. Yeah. And, and that's the mission field now. That, mm. That's our situation now. Not mm. that once we've escaped the lockdown, we'll see God's plan in progress, but that right now, right today... That's very hard to accept, isn't it? I mean, I think we both yeah. felt pretty flattened today. And, but it's, it, you have to keep remembering this. And we've said it before, that even on the cross, it was a mission field for Jesus. Um, forgiving the people who nailed him to the cross... Um, sorting out the thief on the cross, sorting out his mother's domestic arrangements um, and giving us the wonderful gift of saying, God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Which s revives me when things go wrong. <laughs> the cross was a mission field 
And if you're on the cross, it can be a mission field. I know that's not easy, but I'm sure that is mm. true. Sure and and maybe true. for us, you know, living to the full in the middle of the uncertainty. Somebody wrote to us this week, didn't they? And just, well, a couple of things. One person said how important humour was in the middle of it. Yeah. And somebody wrote to us from Northern Ireland. And I remember, Adrian, when we went over to Northern Ireland right in the middle of the Troubles. Yeah. And we were in a hall squashed in with loads and loads of people who just wanted to laugh. They didn't right. make the troubles go away, no, but they, they wanted, wanted to yeah. laugh. Yeah. And we heard from someone this week, and, and, and he was talking about how in the middle of all this, and of course Northern Ireland remains particularly fragile. Um, you know, there's sectarianism, there's the tensions of Brexit, and they've got COVID. And he was telling us about a festival that's been going on online called the Four Corners Festival. And I had a look at it, Adrian, and the theme of it, mm. which is couldn't be more relevant, is breathe. Well, that's now, that's good. like that's a, a great symbol theme, isn't it? Yeah. of everything that we're at with yeah. the COVID thing. But it was breathe in the right stories, the truth, the calm, mm. grace, shalom, hope, and breathe out compassion and forgiveness. And I thought that was an amazing image of what we have to do it's to live great, life um, in its fullness it's a great aim moment. to have yeah it's not easy for some of us but no but a, sometimes it's a we wonderful lose confidence. wonderful thing to have before you yeah yeah i think breathe is a fantastic yes theme yes it is yeah oh gosh it's it is difficult now but i find that quite inspiring i must say it is and i hope you all do breathe as in well and breathe yeah, out breathe in and live in the breathe moment yes. in abundance yes if you can if you can <laughs> Well, for a moment, yes, maybe for you a can. moment, yes, yeah. Cup of tea. Mm, I'll see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.